Okay, I've started uh, recording on here. Okay, so I've asked the question about um, is there uh, is there car is uh, karma? Um, I think it was if, if there is karma that's operating or grace operating with people in twelve steps, just like um, Hawkins would talk about. Um, you know the uh, the karmic grace uh, in meeting a, a teacher of enlightenment. I mean, the way I sort of see it, uh, and my understanding of from you know just being a, a Hawkins student, is that more or less everything is operating by karma. Now, one of the things I mean, I you know Hawkins said in his lectures that nearly everyone who attends his lecture lectures is destined for enlightenment. You know, why would you be in a lecture for enlightenment unless you were, so your destiny was that for enlightenment? However, um, he said with, with some, you know, uh, he said, and he's probably right, some of them might not achieve enlightenment for many lifetimes, and some of them may take very big detours, you know, may take an alcohol, a gambling detour for several lifetimes before they come back to it. Um, so, um, and uh, for the 12 steps, my experience of being in the rooms with 12 steps, I mean, to hear of the 12 steps and to even come into the rooms of the 12 steps for me is, is a karmic grace, uh, a karmic opportunity, a karmic eligibility. For some reason, um, I remember an old timer in, in AA, uh, she was about 40 years sober, a real old timer, sort of saying that when we, all hold a moment's silence for the still suffering alcoholic. You know, that's like the catalyst as we bring in God's light and miracles into the world. And somehow some hapless alcoholic, you know, runs into a set of circumstances where they hear about AA and are called into the meeting to be exposed to their opportunity to, um, to see if they want to take the opportunity to surrender to God and, and work the 12 steps. And I would say, that, you know, that karmic eligibility is happening due to a certain ripeness for them. However, they may not be ripe enough. So as one knows in the 12-step rooms, you know, lots of people are um, in despair. It's almost like their, you know, their good karma or their karmic merit brings them in, but yet their ego is still defiant. I always, you know, and we sort of say in the wisdom of the rooms, it's a bit like, well, either, um, you know, uh, either surrender and get the program or just go out there and do some more research. And if they do uh, uh, choose not to surrender to God and work the program, you know, many of them die. It's almost like the ego is that defiant that even though there's grace and there is good karma bringing them into the rooms, pulling them in, they're still not, you know, their egos are still not ready to surrender. So I think um, like with the rooms, many are called and yet even when they're called and they have the good fortune to come, uh, the, some, with, with many of them, the ego is still defiant in not being uh, willing to surrender to a higher power. Um, and I think that would be the case uh, with Hawkins. You know, there's good karma bringing them into the, his lecture room with Hawkins, and yet some of them, the ego may, uh, may not be ready in this lifetime to start the journey of spiritual surrender. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it can't be forced on someone if they don't want to surrender, you know, what, what they're, usually they're just going to either um, experience some more pain and then surrender later on to God, or they may die of their addiction and come back for, uh, in the next lifetime and see if they're willing to surrender. I mean, Hawkins did say with the 12 steps, it's, it's a fast way to God. If you've got addiction, and you don't surrender to God in this lifetime, then you're going to have addiction and come back in the next lifetime over and over again and keep dying until you finally surrender to God. So it's a fast way to God uh, because either you surrender and uh, get well or you just die of, uh, of addiction. Okay, so I'm going to stop.